In statistics, there are times when we want to find the area under the curve between two values. For example, I might want to find the area between 12 and 21. And here's that area. And I would use the normal CDF function and I would calculate normal CDF 12 comma 21 comma 20 comma 5 because we can see that the mean here is 20, that's the middle value, and the standard deviation is 5. Now, on the other hand, sometimes we want to find the area below a certain x value or above a certain x value, and that's where the calculator can get a little tricky. Suppose, for example, I want to find the probability that x is less than 8. I'll mark this on my graph. 8 is about here. And so I'm looking for the area that is less than 8. And that area is going to go all the way into the tail, so it goes out to infinity. Now keep in mind that we always have to start with the left boundary and then give the right boundary, and then the mean and the standard deviation. The problem here is that we don't have a left-hand boundary, and we're supposed to be going all the way out to negative infinity. But you can't enter that on the calculator. So when I have something to enter, and I want to put in normal CDF, and what I really want to do is go negative infinity to 8, and the mean is 20, and the standard deviation is 5. The graphing calculator won't let you do that. We're not allowed to put in a negative infinity, or at least there's no negative infinity button. So what we do instead is we put in a value that is very, very far to the left of our graph. And the value that we usually use is negative 1, E, 99. And what this means is negative 1 times 10 to the 99th power. So 1 times 10 to the 99th power would be a very, 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 very large number. And so by making it negative, we're going very far to the left. So it's not actually negative infinity, but it might as well be for our purposes because it's so far to the left that um, it um, is not going to make a difference in our answer. So our probability will come out um, the same as what it would actually be if we could go out to infinity and um, when we round our, our answer. So we're not concerned about the difference there. All right, so how do we actually type this into the calculator? That's the issue here. So for this problem, I want negative 1 E99. To type in the negative, you have to press the negative in parentheses, and then the 1. And to get the E, the tricky thing here is that what you're going to look for is the comma key and that's just above the 7 on your graphing calculator. And right above there, right above the button, it says EE. -E. So there's two E's. That's the button you're looking for. So before you hit that comma key, you're going to press second and then the comma. And that will enter just a single E on your calculator. You would think they would put two E's because it says two E's on the button and no they don't. So there you go, Texas Instruments. And then we put the 99 on the end and so on the calculator it's going to say negative 1 E99. Now what I get um, a lot from students is they will do something else and for a while it works, and then all of a sudden it doesn't work, and they want to know, well, why is it? What is it? What is it that I did? So here's a couple of things that you can do, which might work at times, might give you the right answer at least, 
um, and other times it won't. So I recommend that you don't actually do this. You want to use the actual E that we want, um, which is right above that comma key. Sometimes people will type in negative 1 and then a lowercase e, 99. And so what this is actually equal to, if you just type that in and press enter, you'll see that it's equal to negative 269.109901. And the reason for this is that e itself is equal to 2.7 1.8281828 and then it does something else. This is called Euler's number. So when we get a value like this, negative 269, well where would that be in my graph here? It would actually be pretty far out here already. So um, once you get more than three standard deviations away from the mean, pretty much anything is going to work, to be honest. Now, do I want to use the number three? I'll say, well, that's just beyond three standard deviations. No, that might be still a little bit too close, but probably a negative three would be just fine. So you can try it and see, um, compare the results. So that's the value of negative 1e99. E um, and another thing that people will enter is they'll type in negative 1e99. E Looks totally fine here. This e is actually a very large e, whereas um, normally when you type it, it comes out looking like this, where it's a smaller e than the numbers around it. So um, they get this e by pressing alpha and the sign button and I like to say it's a sin to do that don't do it um, because E the capital E here is really just uh, a variable and you can store values in there so the default is that it's equal to zero and so this is going to actually equal zero depending on what value has been stored in E, but but usually it's zero. Usually people haven't stored a value in there. So you would get zero. Um, in this problem, yeah, zero might very well work, but again, in another problem, it wouldn't. So you really have to be careful about um, how far the value is out there. Um, so again, please use second and the comma. Second, comma, and that will get you the E because of the E, e button. So I wish that made more sense, but that's the way the calculator works. So there you go.